Come on, everyone. Come on, it's the final bit. It's the final bit. Welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody still okay? Paul, taking your weather off. Like it. Settle down. Uh, You know, that's power, isn't it? That was a bit of power. I fucking love that. My kids don't even do that. Just looked at you and you went, just went and sat back down. Whoa, let's see if it works with you, Judy. See if you do what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, that was a letdown. A um, couple of texts before we get the final bit on the, on the, uh, on the final bit of the show on the road. Um, Anne Marie, where's Anne Marie? It's her birthday. She's gone. She's there. Where are you, Marie? Wow, it's... Come on, what a fucking night you're having for your birthday. <laughs> How old are you, Anne-Marie? You're not telling me. Brilliant. Whoa. Party night. <laughs> birthday of Anne-Marie. How old's Anne-Marie? 27. Grassing bitch, but thanks. <laughs> 27. Happy birthday, Anne-Marie. Paul texted me saying, how can you criticise my hair? Look at yours, or something to that effect. <laughs> dude, I'm 40. I've been with the same woman 17 years. I've got... My life's fucking over, dude. Does, you're trying. That's the difference. You're trying. I wore this shirt in Newcastle on Saturday and yesterday. It's three days on. I'm st I've not even had a wash. Don't give a fuck. I've got things growing off me knob. I don't even know what's going on. Honestly, it's like... I could only ever fuck a vegetarian. It looks like mushrooms down there nowadays. Anyway, uh, and finally, uh, Dave Hewitt. Where's Dave Hewitt? Well, this is a great section, isn't it? This is, um, <laughs> this is the interactive section of the show. People that want a mention basically text this show, this bit, and then, it, oh, it goes crazy from there. It's so involved. Dave Hewitt, he's celebrating getting divorced. So is he still here? He's probably fucking killed himself. And do you know what? Good. He's crying on Oldham Street now, going, oh, she left me, she left me. Full of bravado 20 minutes ago, Dave Hewitt. I'm celebrating a divorce. I'm fucking excellent. Meanwhile, she's getting banged the shit off by the milkman. She's just taking a load of what could be silver top cream all over her. Who knows? I don't, if anybody in the room is divorced, I don't actually admire you because me and my wife won't get divorced. It's our wedding anniversary on the 3rd of September, which is on Wednesday. That'll be 10 years married, 17 years together, which if you're young, sounds lovely, doesn't it? Oh, you must be so in love. Fuck that. We're not in love. We're in debt. There's a difference. <laughs> we can't afford to leave each other, number one. Secondly, we're not going to leave each other. We had a chat where both of us sat at the kitchen table and went, look, all our friends are getting divorced. And your friends who get divorced make it sound so fucking glamorous. They're crying on the other end of the phone. Oh, she left me. I live in a bed seat. My wife's shit. I'm either crying or watching telly or eating takeaway curry or wanking. And I'm on the other end of the phone going, mate, your wife sounds fucking brilliant to me. Shut up. That's my dream wife you've got there. Be quiet. Me and my wife, we sat down and said, shall we get divorced? We couldn't afford it, firstly. And secondly, we went, do you know what? We did get married, and we did say till death do us part and stuff. And we realised that neither one of us wanted to get divorced because we didn't want to risk the other person finding happiness with somebody else. <laughs> it was a risk we couldn't afford to take, and we just went, fuck it. What we'll do, we'll grind it out like a boring nil-nil away at Ivory in the 80s. We'll grind it out, and then one of us, when we're about 60 or 70, will die. And then the other one's the winner. And <laughs> we high-fived on it. We shook on it. Right, so David Hewitt, enjoy your divorce, if you're still here. But you're probably not. Right, it's been good so far, hasn't it? Three went through in that bit. Let me just read out who they were for you, if I can find one of my bits of paper. Uh, Tom Short, who was the hep cool cat. He was good, wasn't he? Uh, Andy Marsh, who... Uh, stopped and then you went no come on it's this is the X Factor <laughs> Woo! come on do it for your dead mum and he was like ah, okay I'm gonna 
going to do it for my dead mum. And then Dewey Oliver, who was just great, but he didn't like her, but I did, so fuck you. Um, <laughs> we've got four in this section. This is going to be interesting. We need to boost the energy. Do you remember when Andy came on and he couldn't do it after about a minute, and then he went, oh, I'm going, and you went, come on, no, that goodwill. It brings everybody through. These are brand new acts. Some of them have never done it before. The louder you cheer, the funnier they'll be. This bit will not last long. It's 15, 20 minutes. The more you can clap, the better it'll be. Good? Fair? Deal? Let's give him a fair crack. Come on, everyone. The first act is Johnny McHenry. Fuck the goodwill, get me off. Um, as you know... Um, as we were grasped up earlier, I am doing this for charity. Please raise the cards. All I had to do was get up them steps. Don't have to do fuck all else. <laughs> Switzerland, fuck it. Federer, he's a wanker. Fucking get me off. <laughs> Don't give a shit. <laughs> um, no, I'm doing a series of challenges for charity. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Vote for the best comedian tonight. Trust me. Um, when I asked, I was chatting to my wife about doing these challenges and saying, you know, what was entailing all the different things I was doing. I said, I'm going to fancy doing stand-up, you know, get up here. She said, what's involved? And I said, well, you've got to get up, give a lasting impression to the audience, you know, give them something to remember, last for five minutes. He's looking at me like that. <laughs> like what? Said, you have not got a fucking prayer. Another of my good mates who's here tonight told me uh, I should wear a pair of flip-flops on stage. Why the fuck would I wear a pair of flip-flops? He said, because when you're walking off, it sounds like somebody's clapping you. <laughs> oh, <I'm kidding. laughs> but, you know, um, just some of the things we're doing on these challenges. One of them's a skydive. And I've got plenty of people involved doing it. I mean, Missy said she fancied doing it. I said, okay, you know, no problem, we can crack on and we can sort it out. She said, but we need to do it at different times. Why do we need to do it at different times? Well, we've got a son, right? So, in case the plane crashes, right? We go to Spain on holiday with our son, doesn't matter. We've got a fucking parachute on each, and that's a problem. <laughs> but she's, she's, a, she's a clever woman, my missy, she's a teacher. And um, as the lady was on before, I'll tell you, teaching is not the easiest subject in the world. And today was the first day back. Full of, I asked her tonight, how did you get on? She said it was fucking tantrums, you know, bullying, all kinds of shit. It's even fucking worse when the kids get back tomorrow. So it's just... <laughs> it's just it's, but <laughs> I don't know if you're like me. I've got a son. Um, we've been blessed with him. He's 10 months old. He's doing great. He doesn't look like me, which is a fucking bonus. Um, but you want your kids to grow up being clever and I don't think looking at television and looking at all the things these days it pays to be stupid I mean fucking uh, Lib Dems might be something to do with that I don't know um, <laughs> it could <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, it could, I mean you look at TV now Big Brother you've got a person on there who's on benefits a person on there who is on there because he watches telly and we watch the program of him being on telly, I think. Yeah, that's right. And uh, some woman from Essex who is easily the most brain dead person I've ever seen. And it's like, this is what people are growing up to be, and the millionaires. And it's like, this weekend, the, the number one subject on Sky News was Arge from The Only Way is Essex has gone missing. <laughs> the fucking, the number one. He's gone missing. Not Gaza, not. Falcao joining United. Not, not none of that. It was, he's, 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 he's gone missing. K8, he's outside the sugar hut. Oh, it's all going off down here. It's fucked. It's fucked. We don't know where he is. We don't know where he is. He'd gone to the wrong airport. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? I mean, seriously. I mean, is that, that what kids are growing up to be? I don't, I don't get it. The most famous one of all, Kim Kardashian. She's the most brain dead woman on the planet. She's only famous off the back of being on her back, doing a sex tape. And you know what she's pissed me off the most about? She's made me feel sorry for Kanye West. <laughs> I mean, 
that bloke must get up in the morning and shit himself and thinking, one of these days he's going to ask me how big her ass looks. <laughs> what the fuck do I say to her? I'm really, I'm really not sure. But you know, it's, it's one of them things that hopefully my kid will grow up to be a very clever lad. But if we're talking about clever lads, you've got a comedian on, not the next one, but the next one after that is one of my good mates, Danny. And he is a clever lad, but at times things fail him. And um, I've got to mention one. I know you shouldn't really talk about your mates and things like this, but Nanny was out the other week, and um, he, just, he just gets into bother sometimes, and he's been a chivalrous lad. He's on a night out. He offers to buy a girl a drink. He says to her, uh, what would you like to drink? And she says, Sauvignon Blanc. Sorry, what was that? Sauvignon Blanc. All oh, right, okay. And he totters off to the bar, and he comes back five, about five, ten minutes later with a pint and a packet of salt and vinegar crisps. <laughs> Johnny McKendry, ladies and gentlemen. That was amazing, Johnny. So Danny will be doing it. Danny's not the next one. Danny's the one after. That was... Um, so are you glad it's done, Johnny? Are you glad it's done? You never have to do it again? Except for the fact that, unfortunately, you've qualified to go through to the clap-off. And here's the thing, you've got a third of the audience are your friends who <laughs> all they have to do to fuck you up for next week. <laughs> that could be a br amazing, could it? Every week you keep coming up like that. Well, nine years ago I did this fucking thing for charity. Uh, my mates just keep turning up and fucking me over. <laughs> that was brilliant, wasn't it? Big round of applause for Johnny, just doing it for charity. Well done, Johnny, that was excellent. The next act, ladies and gentlemen, is called Chris Keogh. Johnny, you're our star. Start us clapping. Good lad, everybody else joining. He's a great act. He's Chris Keogh. Hello. Hello, come on. Hey, that's more like it. I've got the, the act that follows the in between the two charity acts. Brilliant. And I've got a stupid haircut. <laughs> anyway, I'm not wrong, no. I'm never wrong. Well done, thank you. I'm going to tell you a little story now. About 10 years ago, uh, cash your minds back if you will, 2005, great years. Um, I went on quite a long um, sort of like barren spell when it came to the old sex. Anyone on a barren spell at the minute? You are? How long has it been? You sound very depressed about it, to be honest with you. How long has it been? How many months? Four months? Um, it's not really a barren spell, that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel quite inadequate now. Anyway, energy. Mine, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was on this barren spell, and it, it had been quite a while, and I met this girl, and went out a couple of times, and it was all going well, and all that, and um, I knew that sex was going to be on the cards the next time we met. I was a bit nervous, so I spoke to my friends, and they said, you know, don't worry about it. It's just like riding a bike. Which would have been fine if it wasn't for the fact that just the week before I'd actually tried riding a bike <laughs> for the first time in a while. And while technically I could do it, I wasn't very good. You know, it wasn't in my uh, top five ever bike rides. You know, a bike ride I would think about again in the future. You know, and I certainly wouldn't have wanted the bike to have told any of its friends about how I was very nervous to begin with and then I just came off before it even got anywhere, really. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, the fateful night came um, and I didn't need to worry about the bike because that didn't happen. No, what happened was far, far worse than that. And that everything was fine, but I just couldn't sort of coordinate sort of this area. You know what I mean? I was like, I just couldn't quite achieve, um, what's the word, docking, is that right? <laughs> or coupling, you know. It was like, and I, and I sort of like ascended to sort of this higher level. And it was, it was like watching myself, and I looked down, it was like watching somebody struggle to park a car in a garage. 
you know, albeit while being given sort of quite vocal encouragement by the garage owner, you know. <laughs> Go on, get that car in the garage. <laughs> get it all the way in the garage. <laughs> Touch both sides of the garage. <laughs> and I was like, left a bit, no, that's not right. Right a bit, no, that's not right. Right a bit more, no, that's not the garage, that's the back garden. <laughs> and in the end, I, uh, I just resorted to just driving the car backwards and forwards into the wall at the side of the garage. <laughs> Until the garage door closed. <laughs> because the moment had passed. So, I had to take the car home and park it myself. So my sex drought continued, because obviously I couldn't include that in my official figures. Yeah, yeah. How long is that now? Yeah. Anyway, let's end with that bit. How about a joke about crocodiles? Yay! You all say. Um, I was reading today about crocodiles. Um, apparently, crocodiles can run at 35 miles an hour. And they can also swim at 35 miles an hour. So a crocodile can both outrun and outswim you. It's worth bearing in mind, isn't it? Because if you're having a triathlon against one, <laughs> then you're going to have to make up all your time on the bike. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for realising that's a joke as well. I did that in Preston. And the guy in the front row said, well, how long can he maintain those speeds for? As though I was earnestly giving out sort of strategy advice to triathletes in the audience. Yeah. Found out today, apparently, um, multitasking's a myth. Sorry, girls. No, it is. I was reading about it in this book about how the human brain works. The next thing you know, I'd crash my car. That was brilliant from Chris Keogh there, because that was one of the toughest slots of the evening, wasn't it? It's really tough. Right, so Johnny and Chris have both beat the frog there impressively. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever done anything for charity, anyone? But, well, imagine that you had to do a comedy set for charity and you really didn't want to do it, so you said to your mate, who you think you're better than, you go on first, because then you'll be shit. <laughs> and, um, It'll make me look good. Because <laughs> it's like, there's, imagine if there was a bit of pressure on you and then your mate just goes on and just goes like that. Hello, Glasgow! And everyone's like, oh, fucking hell, it's Billy Connolly! Yeah! Then Chris Keogh comes on with just a beautiful, beautiful set and a joke about crocodiles and you're just going, that's sublime comedy. That was wonderful. Now, this cunt coming on now. <laughs> He's also doing it for charity, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him all the support we can. Come on, Danny. It's Danny Newen. I didn't even know to take this off the microphone. Um, that's how much of a comedy act I actually am. Because um, this isn't really scripted, I'm just speaking to a load of people with bright lining. Oh my God, you look really angry with me straight away. Oh my God, you would have white. I'm telling you that this totally wasn't scripted because um, I need to turn on my phone and see what I'm actually. I'm only joking. No, I'm really not really. Because you know when you get on stage and then suddenly your head goes blank and you see you looking around your mates saying, "What the fuck is this?" Um, I'm the same. I thought I could actually wing it tonight. Um, so I went round to my mate Paul's, and he knows it. He's holding up the camera there. He actually said he was going to have a tripod, but it only turns out that he's got an iPhone. And I thought that basically, when you were looking around, I thought that I'd be fine because I was with two countdown champions. 
but it turns out that the countdown champion signaled you out and made a beeline for the most intelligent, sharpest comedian in the room. So I knew I was in fucking trouble when his son put up his hand and then pointed towards me. <laughs> so then I thought, I can still get away with it, but I thought, what's the fucking point, you know? This is completely unscripted because I had it in my phone to say the clever shit when it turns around. Johnny, Johnny, stop, get your head out of your hands because you pointed towards me when your dad tried with the sharpest guy in the room. At the end of the day, I was gonna go unnoticed. Two countdown champions and you for charity, fucking hell for charity. And then all of a sudden, instead of going the charity hog and I'm there behind you going. <laughs> he suddenly says, whoa, this is the guy where my dad's just had a guy, the sharpest guy in the room. <laughs> what I will say is that I prepared something on my notes. Um, and by the way, I'll also say that um, today I knew if I told any of my mates that I, um, was gonna try a comedy act on my phone. I knew for a fact, as soon as they got up here, they start ringing me. <laughs> so the funniest thing that I could do was go around to my mates, try a few double takes. Paul Crossway, I love you. Do you know what? <laughs> hey, hey, you're the, he's the best person because what he actually said to me, what I didn't know before, is I put your phone on flight mode. Flight mode, no calls can get through. It's so I'll start with the jokes anyway that I thought were quite comedic. Police arrested two youths in my side last night. One was drinking battery acid and the other one was eating fireworks. They charged one and let the other one off. <laughs> Scruffy disheveled man was arrested in Manchester Central Library accused of stealing 10 books on crazy paving. Please think he's a crack addict. <laughs> a man is in the Royal Infirmary tonight after being attacked by another man with an electric drill. Whoa, 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 whoa. And another one, I, I was actually told to give a comeback, so. I'm a novice. Um, oh shit. A man is in a. Mo uh, let's move on from that one. The man. Oh, I need to. Never mind. Jesus Christ, I'm bad. Pop star Lionel Richie has just opened up a new chain of butcher shops in Bradford. They're called. Hello? Is it me you're looking for? Is it me? Is it me? I actually said me. Fucking hell, I'm bad. Like I say. Um, insiders say he was only up there. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Insiders say he was only actually allowed up there. <sighs> Do you know what? Boo. And, and I had three comebacks to say, and I thought they were the fucking best witted ever. I'd, I'd have everyone in hysterics. And then I fucking bounce them out of the park. But you know, when your head's not thinking right, and you know. Fucking, you are a fucking yeah, legend. You're good there. Danny, ladies and gentlemen, how brilliant was that? Do you want some more from Danny? <laughs> Danny, that was fucking amazing. Did you, um. Did you write that or did you just make it up? 
<laughs> it's brilliant. Is Danny pissed by any chance? You're going to be very proud of yourself in the morning when you see that footage. <laughs> People are like, ah, what happened at the comedy show? Well, to sum it up... <laughs> hey, it was fucking great. Well done, Danny. Right. Ugh. Final act, ladies and gentlemen. That was great. All your boys have got through. <laughs> fucking hell. I will say if Danny wins, he isn't coming back. That will not be happening. One more act, everybody. Please don't talk while the last act's on. This is the hardest slot of the night, especially following that. So, ladies and gentlemen, all you love and give it up for a really good act, Mr. Rob Mulholland. Hello, Manchester. Oh, yeah, no, thank you for that lovely welcome. Uh, it does seem like a lot of faith to put into a man who looks like the kind of guy who leaves comments under porn videos. All right. I mean, I know I'm a creepy-looking guy, right? I get that, right? I, I, think, I think it's partly because I'm six foot seven, right? So I don't stand next to people. I, like, loom over them, right? Here's something you didn't know about being six foot seven. I can't see the little engage signs on toilet doors because of the angle. Can't see them. So I was in this cinema in Leeds, which, unbeknownst to me, had unisex toilets, trying to find a cubicle when a young lady opened the door of hers to find me like this. With my head six inches from a crotch. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? I said, no, no, I was just trying to see if it was red. Did not. <laughs> did not help. If anything, made it a lot, a lot, lot worse. Uh, the thing is, like, it's, you know, it's a hard time in the economy right now, but there are some people who you suspect, like, no matter how good life was going for everyone else, they'd still slip through the cracks. Like, I was uh, sat out on the street in Leeds enjoying our world-famous continental cafe culture, when uh, this, fuck off, you're from Manchester, you've still got dial-up internet. <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, she came and sat, sat next to me, like, uninvited, and just started telling me all about her life. And like, right, how can I describe this woman? Uh, basically, she looked like if you made an entire person out of crack, right, and glued it together with stale jizz, then that jizzy crack woman would cross the fucking street to avoid the shambling bag of despair that sat next to me. Right, before I met her, I did not know that herpes had a smell. Right, and she started telling me all about her life, how for 15 years she'd been homeless and unemployed and she had no family or friends and she used her body to make money and then she just looked at me dead in the eyes and said, you know, sometimes I just think I might kill myself. I'm just sat here having a coffee and I'm the fucking Samaritans. I'm like, I was trying to think of something to say that might help her, so I just said, yeah, maybe you should kill yourself. <laughs> right, maybe she should. 15 years this has been her life. It's not suddenly getting better now. It's not like the next time I see her, she's going to be there in a little business suit looking all spiffy with shoes that aren't covered in vomit. Like, oh, yes, I took the £1.50 you gave me and enrolled in college. I'm a paralegal now. No. Like, think about it. 15 years. After 15 seconds of sucking tramp cock for crack money, I'd be like, you know, maybe this life thing isn't my forte. I'd be straight on the phone to fucking Nicola to get me to Dignitas. These, I, I admired her though, because like, I've, I've contemplated suicide a lot in my life, and like, but I've, I've, I've attempted to attempt suicide. I've never quite got there to making the final decision. Like, I thought it'd be romantic to just walk into the sea and drown like Sylvia Plath, but I wasn't that committed. I took a towel. <laughs> and then I tried to kill myself by taking a thousand paracetamol, but I took the first two and I felt a lot better. And then after that, I, I tried to jump off a cliff, but I was only young and he had a strong grip. <laughs> That's my favourite joke and set. <laughs> Well, like, it's weird depression, because like, sometimes it can be for no reason. People can just be depressed, but sometimes things happen that make you depressed. And I think the most depressing thing that can possibly happen is like when you look in the eyes of someone who you just fucking love, and you can just see them make the decision that they never want to fuck you under any circumstances ever. <laughs> and you're halfway through fucking them at the time. Like, you're in the middle, and they're just like, nope, this was clearly a terrible idea. Please vacate my genitals. Like... 
The thing is, I've been with my girlfriend for like five years now, so this is becoming way more frequent. And uh, like, just she'll just sort of stop, and she'll be like, oh, I'm just not feeling it, I've got a bit of a headache. You were doing great though, which as an endorsement of my sexual abilities is like giving a fat kid a participation medal on sports day. But then uh, she looks at me, she's so sweet, and just says, you know, you can still finish though. And I do not want to do that, because at that point you're essentially just masturbating using someone instead of an old sock. And I, I totally do though, that's the thing. Like, at this point, I'm way too far gone. I've got two put choices at this point. Either it's going in her or on everything. So I've just got to close my eyes and get through this and then run to the shower and just sit down without turning on using the tears to scrub the shame off myself. Just rocking backwards and forwards till all the fucking joy in my heart is gone. And that is the true meaning of love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rob Mulholland. <laughs> wow. Action man. Uh, our final act of the evening. And that is the show. So we're going to have to do a clap off. Can I firstly thank the judges for taking the entire second half off? Thanks for that. It's going, you know, we're not fucking putting the cards up anymore. There's no point. So what we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, is a simple clap off where we get the axe on and you give them just a, a clap on me. So Colin, have you got any sophistic sophisticated equipment up there to measure it? Absolutely not. Not. So we'll do it via our ears. Controversial. Right. Let's just do the first half and then we'll do the second half and we'll see who wins. So let's have the three who beat the frog in the first half back on stage. Tom Short, Andy Marsh, Julie Oliver. A big round of applause for them all as they all come up. Seems like hours ago, doesn't it? So, simple. If you could come in the order that you did it. So if you stay there, Julie Oliver, thank you very much. Andy Marsh. No, Tom, you were right. Bro. In order then, this is the order that you saw the act. So ladies and gentlemen, you loved him at the time. Tom Short, let's hear it for Tom. <laughs> Woo! Okay, that's, that's about a two. <laughs> Somebody at the back. No, it was more than that. You're right, it was more than that. It was. Uh, the second act that you loved this evening, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Marsh. <laughs> Andy, we'll say goodbye to you. The third act that I loved, and most of you did, and she was brilliant, Jules Oliver. Tom's beat you, unfortunately. Thank you, Jules. You were excellent. Right, Tom, if you'd go and take a seat or stand over back where you all stand, then when we get the winner of the second half on, fucking punch up time. Yeah! The only reason I compare it. So, ladies and gentlemen, basically everybody that was on in the second half beat the frog. Big round of applause for everybody in the second half as they come back on stage. In order! Quick as you can, they were Johnny McKendry, Chris Keogh, Danny Nealon, and Rob Mulholland. So, in order, come on, Johnny, it was you first, I'll then Chris. I'll put the order. Okay, yeah, it's fine. You, you just step over him, whatever. <laughs> right. Whoop. I don't want that piss fucking cunt behind me, no way. We're right off there. Right. <laughs> Bear in mind, they might cheer for the favourites. So. They will, yes they can. Johnny McKendry, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Keogh, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Ooh, yes, my personal favorite. Danny Nealon. Johnny. Danny. Yeah, go on then, Johnny, go and sit down. <laughs> right, wait, 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 stay there, Danny. Right, without wishing to be crude, let's not make the entire fucking evening a farce <laughs> and some sort of spaz fest, right? <laughs> Rob Mulholland! <laughs> Danny! <laughs> Rob! <laughs> Colin, what do you reckon? That's really close. It's far too close, let's get Tom up and we'll have two from this half. Tom, 
back to the stage please don't clap yet don't clap yet save your clapping right Danny in the middle dude get the fuck off you're not having it back no 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 <laughs> right just watch you don't fall off stand there you will fall off and hurt yourself Fucking hell. Right, we'll go in reverse order then. We'll see. see da, 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 da. Rob! <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Tom! <laughs> Sorry, it was Tom. He deserved it. Well done, Danny. Oh, lovely sportsmanship from Rob Mulholland there. And Danny <laughs> looks like he, he's going to shake mate, his hand. Mate, you're he's, unbelievably gifted. Thanks. Thanks for that, Danny show going on but no worries right ladies and gentlemen Tom Short is your worthy winner uh, this evening stay there Tom this bit is a bit awkward unfortunately it, will you hold that as our winner this is your prize this is your, I've not thought that through you hold that Okay, you know that's his prize is the winner is anybody taking a picture for the website let me move that out the way do, 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 do. Tom Short, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Beat the Frog. He will be coming back. Thank you.